The following is a TV6 News special presentation. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Jamrich Hall on the campus of Northern Michigan University for the first Congressional District Candidate Forum. I'm Greg Trick from TV6, along with Bill Hart from WNMU Public TV 13. Before today's forum, both candidates have agreed upon a set of rules, and Bill, right now, will go over some of those rules. Uh, the rules are fairly straightforward, Rick. Each uh uh, Greg, each candidate will have one minute for an opening statement. Uh, moderators will then ask a series of questions. Each candidate will have one minute, 30 seconds to answer, and his opponent will have the opportunity for a 30-second rebuttal or comment. Uh, the order of answering will shift with each question. At the end of the hour, each candidate will have one minute uh, for a closing statement. All right. Now, during the forum, we ask that you hold your applause during the answers. But right now, give a big round of applause to the candidates, Republican General Jack Bergman and Democrat Mr. Lon Johnson. We'll give you each an opportunity to make an opening statement. Uh, General Bergman, you won the toss today. You have 60 seconds. Well, good afternoon, everybody. It's great to be back home in the Upper Peninsula. You know, the first district was quite large, and we don't get to spend many nights in our own bed and waters meet, but tonight we get that opportunity, so thanks for being here. Folks, again, I'm Jack Bergman, and I decided to run for Congress because as a grandfather of eight, I believe we are not leaving the world that we inherited from our parents and grandparents. Again, I'll repeat, we are not leaving that type of world to our own grandchildren. We have some serious issues. And our parents and grandparents stood up big time. World War I, Great Depression, World War II. Now it's time for us to stand up to make sure that the world we leave is financially set, healthy, and secure so that our grandkids can have the freedoms and the opportunities that we have had. Thank you very much. All right. And Mr. Johnson, you also have 60 seconds. And thank you. And thank you to you, uh, uh, the viewers and the audience, for being here tonight and uh, Northern for hosting. Uh, working hard, playing by the rules, and never giving up. Those are the lessons and values I learned from a family with five generations of Northern Michigan history. Those lessons saw me through uh, a lifetime of work. I was one of the first in my family to graduate from college. I was in Iraq in 2005 as a civilian. Came home in 2006, married my wife in Northport, and worked to invest in and grow U.S. manufacturing companies. I want to take those values to Congress now to do two major things. One, we need to protect what you've worked a lifetime for, your Social Security, your Medicare, and your VA benefits. And second, we need to build an upper peninsula where our families can stay and succeed. We can do both by investing in and protecting our best assets, our people, our land, and our Great Lakes. I look forward to having that debate tonight. Thank you. All right, let's get right to the questions. The first one is, there's been a lot of airtime devoted lately in terms of where you really live, where you're from, and I want to give you both an opportunity to kind of clear the air and tell people uh, where you live and perhaps more importantly uh, what you can do to assure the people in the first district that you're really in touch with the values and needs of Upper Michigan. We're going to start with uh, General Bergman. Thank you. My grandparents came to Ironwood in the 1880s. My grandfather was a miner. My dad and his siblings were born in the company mine clinic. But by the mid-1920s, there was no economic opportunity for 18-year-olds my grandparents had passed, and my dad hitchhiked down to Minneapolis with a couple of his buddies to find work. I was born and raised in a little town south of Minneapolis. But 35 years ago, I made a conscious decision to come back to the Upper Peninsula. Found property in 1980. It took me eight years to be able to afford it. Bought it, designed and built a house. Moved in in the mid-90s. And then the Marine Corps and world events took me away until 2010. I'm a Uper by heritage, by ancestral heritage, and right now, and for the last 30 years, I've been a Uper at heart. Now I'm a Uper who fishes off my dock. All right. And the same question to uh, Mr. Johnson. Sure. I'm the fifth generation of my family to live in Kalkaska County. Not come up on weekends, but to live in Kalkaska. You know, you're hearing quite a bit, um, a, lot, uh, of, a lot of disinformation out there. Um, from my opponents talking about where I live and, and uh, uh, some lies about my family. I want to set the record straight. What they're attempting to do is to distract you from the fact that they want to move your Social Security and Medicare off to Wall Street. When you don't have the issues on your side, you seek the politics of personal destruction. 
and I think that's wrong. I'm the fifth generation of my family to live in Kalkaska. Um, I, um, I, I moved uh, to Kalkaska in 2006, and I look forward to working for the people of northern Michigan every single day. All right, General no. Bergman, Do you we have get, uh, get, 30 seconds for a rebuttal. Yes. Were you referring to me as my, the opponents who want to move to Wall Street? Okay. The answer is it's, that's not true. Nothing more to say? Okay. Well, it's not, if it's either true or it's not, okay. and it's not true, but you have to make up something when you really don't know what the issues are. The issues are with Social Security making sure it is funded past 2032, making sure the seniors that are age eligible today and drawing benefits or are getting close don't get any cuts in benefits. But as I mentioned earlier, grandkids, we need to make sure Social Security is available for them when they're ready to do it. All right, and uh, Mr. Johnson, you have 30 seconds. Well, straight talk is what we, we keep hearing as the logo of the campaign, but that's not exactly what we're hearing now. Um, you know, in Alpena at a town forum, he was asked directly um, on, on the issue of Social Security, would he reform or privatize? He spoke very direct, directly to Cameron and said he believes in privatization. Now, privatization means that it moves over to Wall Street. That's straight talk. All right, and the next question. Uh, this question goes to Mr. Johnson. There are roughly as many American workers classified as discouraged or underemployed as there are people officially counted as unemployed. Uh, hence, total unemployment is much greater than the single digit figures generally reported. Uh, how do we achieve uh, real progress in overall employment in real terms? Well, we start investing in ourselves. We need to invest in us. We need um, to take our tax money and reinvest it into what will create a thriving economy, um, not sending our tax dollars off to Wall Street. Um, last time I checked, Wall Street's doing just fine. We need to invest in our economy here in the Upper Peninsula. That means bringing high-speed internet and mobile cell phone service to every community. That means finally getting that new Sioux Lock funded. That means new energy plants, new pipelines, making sure that college is affordable. We need to invest in us and not to send our tax dollars to Wall Street. Okay. Uh, General Bergman, uh, how do we create uh, real jobs in real time? Great question. What I heard was we got to invest. You're right, but the way you invest is you may have a market rate, corporate tax rate, so that your companies don't take their corporate profits offshore. You create a tax environment in this country, especially here in the first district, where companies who either want to mine, forest, use the waters, whatever it happens to be, manufacturing, say the first district of Michigan is a place that, number one, it's the right place for us because it's business friendly. We can make a profit. We can provide jobs that will attract people to live and work here. But it's, it's about investing in the company's ability to make money so that they can return that money through the economy of providing jobs. Okay. Uh, Mr. Johnson, rebuttal or comment? Well, we need to protect our industries here. Um, you know, that means uh, opposing this TPP trade deal. You know, I met with uh, the mining uh, company here. One of their biggest problems is China's dumping steel. I oppose this TPP trade deal. And again, uh, my, this is a big difference where uh, uh, my opponent and I disagree. He has said in Escanaba this April that he supports the TPP trade deal, and I oppose that. We need to protect our logging and our mining industry, not sign trade, trade deals that allow foreign competitors to steal our jobs. Okay. General, uh, I would like final to comment? I would like to rebut that because, again, this is what political operatives do. They take something, twist it, spin it, turn it to deceive the people as to actually what was said. I do not support TPP. What I support is free trade, but it must be fair trade. We have to provide an economic environment through whatever trade deals are struck that promotes jobs so that we can manufacture, manufacture products that will be sent all over the world. And in return, if we choose to buy from other countries, that's our choice. But we cannot sacrifice American worker jobs just because of a trade deal. All right, the next question. Uh, there have been repeated attempts in Congress to repeal the Affordable Care Act. I'd like to know if you would support repealing it, and if so, what would you recommend as a substitute and if you don't support repeal, are there ways to tweak it or improve it, make it a little bit better? And we begin with uh, General Bergman. Well, the first lie in the Affordable Care Act is the word affordable. It's not affordable. Anything 
that causes small businesses or individuals to not be able to either buy health insurance for themselves or provide health insurance for their workers is not affordable. We want and we need affordable health care. We in this district not only need that kind of health care, we need a specific kind which is related to rural medicine. We have some unique challenges here. The reality is Obamacare has to be repealed. It has already stolen $716 billion from Medicare to pay for it. So when we start talking about Rob and Peter to pay Paul, that's exactly what's going on here. So we have to repeal it. We do have to replace it. How we do that, we'll be working together in Congress, across party lines. I'm a uniter, not a divider. I'm used to handling complex decisions across cultural lines and coming up with solutions that in the end, it may not have been anybody's going in position, but in the end, we look at it and say, wow, we never thought we could have accomplished that. Look what we did by working together. All right, same question for Mr. Johnson. We have to stop playing games with health care. This Congress has voted 50 times, uh, over 50 times, to repeal it, instead of working to the business at hand of, of improving it. How do we fix it? You know, again, what we're hearing out of uh, my opponent, we disagree. He doesn't give you any answers. There's no answer about how we're going to lessen the cost or approve, improve access to affordable health care. Now, there's a number of ways we can do that. Number one, we got, we've got to allow Medicare the ability to negotiate with drug companies. When we do that, we would drive the cost down of prescription drugs by 20 to 30 percent, saving about $14 billion a year. Number two, here in the first district, we have to protect our critical access hospitals. We have over a dozen across this district that are funded in large part uh, by a Medicare reimbursement system, and that access, that critical access designation is very important. We have to protect that. Number three, we cannot allow Medicare to be created into a voucher program. Again, my opponent has continuously said that he wants to create a voucher program for Medicare. That would destroy our local hospitals, and not to mention, Medicare works. It is lower costing than private insurance and reduces the cost of inflation for, for health care. You know, again, I'd like to, and my, and my opponent's retort here, to hear his answer, how do we improve health care? Other than, you've got to trust me and we've got to roll the dice on me. That's not an answer. Right. I, I would like to rebut that. By the way, I'm starting to keep track of the uh, distorted truths here. So far, we're at three. Point is, I don't support Medicare vouchers. I'm not sure where that one came from at all. But the point is, when you have a competitive environment where the government is picking winners and losers and big insurance companies are getting out of the business and you cannot compete across state lines and you have hospitals that are competing in, a, in an arena, urban versus suburban versus rural, where the payment system, uh, single payer system isn't gonna work. We have to figure out something. We're not there yet, but we need people who've actually done something in life, actually done something to make those decisions, not somebody who just has been defending his party for 20 years. Okay. Mr. Johnson, rebuttal? No answer. None. If we were to create, Medicare works. Uh, Medicare has a 1% overhead fee versus private insurance companies, which has a 6 and 7% overhead fee. It works. It has a lower cost of inflation. Again, we have no answers coming out of this, man. It's going to be going to Congress and let's score political partisan points and have re repeal after repeal vote and never get anywhere. And meanwhile, our health care <coughs> costs soars. We need a member of Congress that's going to provide answers and protect our hospitals and protect what you've worked a lifetime for, your Medicare. Thank you. Bill? Uh, this question again goes to uh, Mr. Johnson. There's, oh, this, the, uh, there's growing concern or growing accord among many economists that increased spending on infrastructure could stimulate the American economy and raise overall living standards. Uh, reports on previous stimulus activity were mixed at best. Uh, the question is how much infrastructure-based stimulus spending we can afford. Uh, would you favor such a program and how would you have it paid for? Well, first off, we can't afford to not invest in our infrastructure. You know, um, I believe, uh, this, is, this will be a difference between my opponent and I, I believe that we need to take our tax dollars and invest it into our infrastructure. That means a new pipeline. We've got a 63-year-old pipeline delivering propane to the people of the UP. That's not safe. We've got um, uh, new roads and bridges that need to be built. We need to bring high-speed internet and mobile cell phone service to all our communities. Um, we need to uh, address this new Sioux lock. Um, you know, right now we've got a, 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 
a, a lock that's not stable, that's not reliable. If that lock were to go down, we would have a six month, if that were to go down for six months, we would have a regional depression. Hundreds of thousands of people and jobs would be affected. We need to invest. And when you invest in people, you create the economic activity that ultimately will pay for it. Okay. Uh, General Bergman, do you favor a stimulus program and how would you have it paid for? Well, I'll tell you. My wife and I were the beneficiaries of the stimulus program in 2009 because our zip code, 49969, because we are an underserved area, got internet. Guess what? Still doesn't work. We still have to go into Watersmeet to the intersection of 2 and 45 to get a good solid signal. The point is, just to blindly say we're going to allocate money for a stimulus package without specifics, without outcomes, that's fantasy. That's throwing good money after bad. Do we need to invest in our infrastructure? Absolutely. The Sioux locks are not only an economic issue, it's a national security issue. That money, or that project, was approved 30 years ago, roughly, the design. Now it's being revisited. When I get to Congress, that's number one on my list of what I would call low-hanging fruit that get me accomplished, that number one is going to provide jobs, but more importantly, economic stability and security by getting the lock repaired and the new lock built and expanded. Okay. Mr. Johnson, care for rebuttal or comment? Um, you know, I just like to say there's a big difference between uh, Jack and I and how we build a UP where our families can stay and succeed. He wants to take our tax dollars and hand it off to corporate America and hand it off to Wall Street in the form of, of further tax regulations or, or lesser regulatory uh, burdens. That's not been proven to work. You know, we have a, uh, uh, an effective corporate tax rate for many of our uh, Fortune 500 companies of zero. Those, when you hand our tax dollars off to Wall Street and corporate America, it doesn't come back to us. It's been proven time and time again. It does not work. In 1952, corporate share of federal taxes was 32 percent. Today, it's 10 percent. We're picking up that bar burden, and it's not working. Okay. General? A uh, very short rebuttal. Again, I just added another tick mark here. So that's not true. All right, the next question. Uh, Washington has been deadlocked for a number of years, and some believe the lack of working across the aisle or failure to compromise is the reason for some of the problems in America. What would you do to improve the situation? And it goes to you, General Bergman. Yeah. So again, a great question because, as I mentioned earlier, working together, working across not only party lines, cultural lines, uh, is how you really get the results that you need. Politics, as usual, has been ruling the roost. That's where we are today. My mother used to say, if you want to know who's to blame, look in the mirror. We have the system in this country that we've allowed to occur. We need to send a different type of individual to represent us in Washington, D.C., if we hope for change. If you're just sending someone who's looking for another promotion on a career ladder, you're going to get more of the same. If you send someone who's already had three successful careers and has already lived and worked in Washington, D.C., and testified countless times before Congress and done testimony prep, done policy uh, and legislation work, then I'm your guy. If you're happy with the status quo, then I'm not. The same question for Mr. Johnson. We need to bring back civility. We need to bring back the word compromise. We need just common decency towards people. We can question uh, other people's methods of how we get to somewhere, but questioning their motives, questioning their patriotism isn't, isn't the right thing to do. Um, you know, I'm proud to have the, uh, the endorsement of Congressman Bart Stupak. For 18 years, we had that, someone who went to Washington, rolled up their sleeves, and worked on a bipartisan basis to get things done. But then, again, when, when, when you look at my opponent here, when he's been tested on the civility and uh, leading by example in this campaign, he's failed that test. When, when, uh, Trump, when uh, Trump went after these Gold Star families, he was asked about it wouldn't defend the Gold Star families. Um, when, he was, uh, when Governor Milliken was thrown out of the Republican Party in Grand Traverse County, uh, Jack Bergman was in that room, not a word. And tonight, you know, last night we saw just how bad this politic political year has gotten. Disgusting comments made that were disrespectful to everyone. And I'd like to know my opponent's uh, reaction to that. And you have the opportunity, General well, I, First of all, I have no clue what he's talking about as far as the disgusting comments, but I, I would tell you one thing about Bart Stupak. He'd probably, he'd probably be 
here today on the stage debating had he not chosen to not represent the wishes of the voters of the first district. The point is, we have to, peak to ensure that the people we send to represent us in Washington, D.C. are not going there to become part of some grand fraternity. That's not what represent means. Represent means that you represent the priorities of your constituents. As a Marine, I've represented our government all over the world in some very stressful times. You have to choose. All right, Mr. Johnson? Leading by example. Once again, we just heard that this man won't address some of the most disgusting comments that we've heard in, any pres in the history of American politics last night. And well, you're well, can't wait, even you're, talk you're, about you're, it right you're now. Talking about, I thought you were talking about my comments. Uh, Mr. Johnson has 30 seconds. Oh, I, okay. I, I'll cede my time. Um, do you have a reaction to, uh, uh, to, to you're, okay, candidate yeah, I misunderstood Trump's the reaction. I thought you were talking about disgusting comments I made at the forum last night. And I was trying to go, what are you talking about? All right, we'll let this go on because there was a specific allegation made. In, yeah, and we yeah. Want you to respond. No, I, I get it. I get it. I, if, you did, if you had just said Mr. Trump's comments, I'd have figured it out. Okay, I'm a Marine. Don't get too fancy Keep on me up. here. Don't be. I will. I will. You're on, buddy. <laughs> All right. So, uh, as a father... As a husband, as a grandfather, his comments were inappropriate and inexcusable. Short, sweet, but we need to stay focused here on what's important to the voters of the first district. Repealing Obamacare, making sure our borders are secure, reducing the debt, and protecting our Second Amendment rights. That's our job here today. Okay, are you satisfied with that? So it's, it's for the voters to decide. Okay, all right, okay. we'll move on to the next question. The next question is on taxes. The American tax code is over a million words, Mr. Johnson, and there have been many proposals to alter and simplify it or simplify it. On policy, some favor strategic tax cuts and elimination of some deductions. Some favor increases on the wealthy. Uh, do you have a position on tax reform? Well, a, a couple of things. We've got um, a tax code that has just been absolutely riddled with loopholes put in there by corporations, Wall Streets, and lobbyists. Um, it needs to be reformed. It's 72,000 pages of, uh, of loopholes. It's not working for the American people. We need to bring tax fairness in here. Um, we've got to make sure that corporations, millionaires, and billionaires are paying their fair share. And that doesn't mean having the ability to hide your money over in, uh, overseas. We've got a building in the Cayman Islands with 18,000 corporations in it. They're hiding their cash overseas. If you and I tried that, we'd go to jail. Second, we need to um, have a, uh, a method called PAYGO. Um, for every new item that we add to the budget, that we take something off um, so that we make sure that we don't uh, increase our budget deficit. But I, I want to talk about corporate, uh, corporate tax rates. There's a difference between what the statutory corporate tax rate is and then the affected, uh, effective tax, uh, tax rate is. We've got hundreds and thousands of companies that are paying less than their statutory tax rate. Um, you know, corporate funding, corporate share of our federal tax revenues used to be 32% in 1952. Today, it's less than 10%. We have a real problem. When that gap is created, and it was created by special interest putting tax loopholes in there, when that gap is mm -hmm. created, it affects us. We have to pay for that. We pay for that either with greater tax increases on the working and middle class families, or we pay for that in the lessening of, of services. It's one of the reasons why our college is so expensive. Okay. Uh, General Bergman, tax reform? Well, uh, there used to be a term in D.C. called, a, a department called OPM, it used to be Office of Personnel Management. But largely since we've had such um, recent uh, 20 years, a lot of a democratic leadership at the highest levels. It's become other people's money, and that's what you just heard here, using other people's money who they have worked to earn to take care of your decided business. As a business owner, we need to have a tax rate that allows our corporations to choose our country to come and work in, manufacture in, provide jobs in, and stay in not park their money overseas. And if we do finally get to the logical, common sense solution of, let's say, a 14 or 15 percent corporate tax rate, which would make us competitive worldwide, have a, a tax holiday for that, all that money parked offshore. And maybe we say, okay, 10 percent reinvested in job training for your work, whatever it happens to be. Come up with a solution that corporations will go, hey, I can go back home. What a great deal. 
I can come back to the UP. I hunt and fish there anyway. Okay. Mr. Johnson, careful butt. Well, a lot of us do more than just hunting and fishing in the UP. We actually have to make a living. And we need, we need corporations to be paying their fair share. We've got $2 trillion, $2 trillion parked in overseas accounts from U.S. companies. And we tried a tax holiday, Jack, in 2004, and it didn't work. You know, we, um, um, we need to go after these companies that are, taking, that are taking tax credits and then shipping our jobs overseas, or then taking their revenue and parking it overseas. If you and I tried that, we'd go to jail. The, um, we've got to reform our, this 72,000-page 72, tax code to bring fairness, fairness to working families, fairness to middle-class families. Okay. Uh, General Bergman, uh, rebuttal? No. Okay. Another question. All right, I'm curious uh, to know, what specific recommendations do you have to improve transportation in Upper Michigan, whether it's uh, roads or airports? Do we need a regional airport, or are you in favor of the, uh, the federal subsidies to keep some of the smaller airports going? And this one's going to go to you, uh, yeah. Mr. Bergman, or General well, Bergman. You know, it's a great question, because when you, when you fly in and out of Waters Meet, you've got a couple of choices. Your closest airport that you get commercial transport is Rhinelander, Wisconsin. That is, if you want regular jet transport, there's a couple of flights a day out of Ironwood, or you go to Houghton if you'd like to go through Chicago, Marquette, Escanaba, Iron Mountain. We have unique situation up here. We need to make sure that any type of subsidy, any type of support for airports is balanced so that the people who are paying the tickets can get in and out of where they need to go, but probably more important, that the companies would come here and do business, can send their, their folks, their overseas customers that come here internationally, their, their, you know, the regulators that will eventually come from Washington to visit you if you're going to try to do any business at all. We have to create an environment here within the airports to make sure that the, the airlines come and that the people can afford their leisure tickets to go in and out. But again, that's a decision that has to be made by reviewing what currently exists and looking at the data for the last five, 10 years since the current program started. And one example, Frontier Airlines came in from, and this is Rhinelander, but it's in Wisconsin. Are we okay, is we okay to, any Packer fans in the crowd here? Okay, anyway, the point is um, Frontier Airlines took the subsidy and then left. So, who is in charge of making sure that that doesn't happen again? We have to put some teeth in this stuff so that the companies who pony up, put up, and do the job. Same question for Mr. Johnson. Um, as you remember, a Congress, I would work to bring every nickel back as, po as much as possible to the, uh, from the Department of Transportation. Uh, for roads, for bridges, for our airports. We need a member of Congress that's going to go there and not be ideologically predisposed to, to not bring those back. We had that with Bart Stupak for 18 years. He brought back millions of dollars in infrastructure that helped create jobs. And again, investing in the UP and not sending our tax dollars off to Wall Street under the form of uh, some ideological uh, cover. We need a member of Congress that's going to go there and bring back every nickel that we can get to create jobs. Every single job is important in the UP, and those federal dollars back do that. All right. General Bergman, anything you'd like to add? Yeah, I just had a revelation. I just figured out why uh, Mr. Johnson keeps referring to Wall Street. That makes one of us who actually worked on Wall Street. I never have. Do you have a response to that, Mr. Johnson? Never have either. All right. Well, we are going to take a break, and we will be right back.